Are you concerned that this whole thing could backfire on Republicans, especially if the GOP loses the White House in November? Well, you just heard two Republicans just now blaming Republicans for this crisis. And the irony here is that Senator Langford really tried to sell the American people that his bill would secure the border. It didn't do that. It actually was massive mass amnesty. And for every decent provision in the bill on the very next page, there was an actual loophole. So that 5,000 figure was really irrelevant. It gave, it lowered the standard for asylum seekers. Um, there were exemptions, so many exemptions that that 5,000 figure is probably the very lowest number that they'd have coming across the border. It gave Secretary Mayorkas and President Biden sole discretion, unilateral authority to do whatever they wanted with regards to exemptions to that 5,000 figure. And so it's really ridiculous to say that this, this bill, mass amnesty, was going to secure the border because the Democrat goal is if we can't force Americans to vote for Democrats, well, we're just going to import them and have illegals vote in our elections. That's yeah. what they want to do. And and that's wrong. And we have H.R. 2. That's a great border security bill. We had Donald Trump. He secured had a much better luck at the southern border than Joe Biden. Joe Biden's policies is a wide open border. And any Republican that supports that bill that the Senate just voted on, well, they're for wide open borders because that's what that bill was all about. Again, it's going to be all about messaging now, too, and what the American people hear. And 95 percent of the media is going to blame this on Republicans. This was also, Congresswoman, a huge failure for Mitch McConnell. And many are calling for him to step aside. Uh, if this Ukraine-Israel-only funding bill does pass in the Senate today, is it dead on arrival in the House as well? Well, I hope so. We just had a Israel aid package, standalone package, that failed in the House. Why members of Congress can't do standalone bills for different provisions? Why they have to uh, pull in Ukraine? Why we can't do a standalone Ukraine bill, standalone Israel bill, standalone border package? is beyond me. That is what's right, what's ethical to do for America. And I will tell you, I represent a very purple district. I've been holding town halls almost every week since the start of the year. The most questions we get are about immigration and the border. They are not, the independence constituents that I have in my district and voters, they are not with Joe Biden on this. They are not with moderate Republicans on this. They right. are seeing what's happening in the state of South Carolina and states everywhere and they want it to end. They want it to stop, and they believe in Republicans. They believe in HR2. They believe in our secure border agenda, and that's what they want for our country. Okay. Um, I want to talk about your district. So you were one of eight members of Congress who voted to oust Kevin McCarthy along with Matt Gates back in October. Vanity Fair had some reporting this week that McCarthy's team has apparently identified three of those eight lawmakers most vulnerable to primary challenges and your name, Congresswoman, is on that list. You're being primaried right now in South Carolina by Catherine Templeton. And you responded on Twitter claiming that Templeton is, quote, nothing more than a puppet in Kevin McCarthy's bitter revenge operation. Uh, why do you think Kevin McCarthy is doing all this to you? Well, Kevin McCarthy is just a bitter, mean girl on a revenge tour. He recruited uh, someone to run against me. He's going to fully fund her campaign. You can go to PuppetCatherine.com and learn all about how she pushed Jeb Bush over Donald Trump. She's a never Trumper. She's for the establishment. She's bought and paid for. She is a puppet for Kevin McCarthy. We're going to need all the help we can get. My message to Kevin McCarthy is bring it on. I am against D.C. I am against the establishment. I didn't come here to take orders from Kevin McCarthy or Jeb Bush or any other establishment politician. I came here to represent the low country, to represent South Carolina. Yeah. And we're going to need all the help we can get. I hope folks will go to nancymace.org, donate a dollar today. Let's show Kevin he's not in charge anymore. He was fired for a poor job that he did as speaker. And he abandoned the party. I think that impeachment vote on Alejandro Mayorkas would have passed if he were still in office, but he stepped away with nine months left on his term. Just quickly, about 15 seconds. The attack seems personal. Any idea why? I have no idea why. I, I, I do know that he's just on this revenge tour. We are his number one target. We need folks to chip in at nancymace.org. We want people to see how bad of a candidate he's putting up against us. And they should go to puppetcatherine.com to learn about how Kevin has recruited her, how he controls her, how he's going to fund her campaign and how she's a never-Trumper. And I'm someone who endorsed Donald Trump. I've been with him since 2016. He's the man to save our country, and we need leaders like him, uh, like us, to move this country forward and to save our nation.